All right, guys, what's going on? Megan is back. Let me show you guys how much I weigh right now. I'm down seven pounds already, so I got about, I think, 23 more to go. Yeah, I'm 212.2 with the camera, so about 211. I was 217, so I'm going down to 190. So, wait. Yeah, so I got a few more pounds to go. But anyway, guys, let me show you guys my strategy. It's my, it's my brother, by the way. And I'll say whatever. You guys remember Ernest from the Friends video? That was two years ago. Well, he's here now. He's trying to get sold. Show him the progress already. He's been on and off, but uh, I, got, I got to put him back on it. Do a bicep pose, man. Yeah, he's been on and off, so I got to put him back. As you can see, he's making some gains. I had him do pretty basic shit, man. The, he's lucky that he uh, he doesn't have to repeat the mistakes we all made. You know, he already has experience with everybody else in in this house. Me, Young Zarek, and all that shit. But anyway... I'm, I'm making a separate video about what we're doing around because Ronnie has to focus on school. Anyway, so for my fat loss journey, guys, like I said, I'm already down seven. I have a few more to go. I figured I'd share with y'all uh, the simple strategies I'm using, you know, uh, seven basic strategies I'm using for fat loss just to maximize it. Once again, if you've been watching the channel for a while, I lost fat in the past. I cut like a million times because I always had this, you know, the skinny fat issue. My genetics are skinny fat, meaning I have skinny limbs, skinny legs, skinny arms. Puffy chicks and big stomach, right? So every time I, I would stop training, or I would just, you know, eat normally. I would eat the same shit my sister was eating because we grew up together. I would always be the fat one and she would be the skinny one, right? Never made any fucking sense. We always ate the same shit and we were always playing the exact same game. So, so anyway, so I had to, you know, go through a lot of the different cuts, try different things. You guys obviously know cut back everything was the best thing that worked for me. But I'm giving you guys uh, seven strategies, whether you're doing cut back loading or intermittent fasting or... Uh, 40, 40, 20, if you fish your macros, whatever you're doing, these are seven universal strategies that will always work if you're trying to lose fat very quickly, right? And you'll see, I'll, I'll be going down the scale pretty easily. Uh, it's going to be my, I don't know, probably my fifth time cutting. I cut so many times. But um, I'm definitely, it's definitely going to be faster this time because of all the stuff that I learned. And yeah, so the channel is back in business. School is over. It officially ended yesterday, right? Got my 4.01 deck, so I'm very excited about that. Now I can focus on the channel more. I mean, I made a separate video explaining to you guys why I had to take the long time off because it was a very, very important semester. I had a lot of things on my plate. So anyway, straight to the point, right? I'm going to try to make this short because I have a lot of videos to make, a lot of questions to answer, a lot of emails to reply. All right, so obviously you want to lose fat, right? Whoever else is going to follow me on this journey. We, it's, just, it's the two basic things, right? You want to maximize fat loss and you want to minimize muscle loss, right? Losing weight is not, people say, well, I'm trying to lose fat, let me lose some weight. Losing weight doesn't necessarily mean you're losing fat. You could be losing fat and muscle or water weight. You want to lose the fat and you want to minimize as much muscle loss as possible, right? So it's not just about losing weight. It's about keeping you know, all the muscle you work hard for. So that's why it's not simply about reducing your calories. You always have these random, no avatar having motherfuckers that will just come up to your channel and say, oh, all you got to do is reduce your calories. Anybody who's been working out for a long time and who cut successfully will tell you that that only works to an extent, right? Number one, you got to be really, you know, you got to have a lot of fat on you. If you have a lot, if you have a lot of fat on you and you, you, you reduce your calories, you're going to drop the fat off, obviously. But the leaner and leaner you get, the more reducing your calories begins to hurt you. Everybody knows that. You lose a lot of muscle and eventually your metabolism slows down, a whole bunch of thyroid issues. So with simply reducing your calories is only works in the beginning. You don't want to, you don't keep it as your long-term strategy, right? You want to use it in the beginning, but eventually you want to throw in different factors. Every... Everyone who's been doing this for a long time will tell you that, right? It's not always just the main answer. So, obviously, you're going to incorporate, you're going to have to eat less, obviously, right? You can't keep eating, you know, 10,000 calories and expect to keep losing fat. But um, you don't want that to be your only strategy. So, I'm going to show you guys what's been working. To maximize fat loss, obviously, you want to have insulin control, right? I always say before you stop something, you got to cut it at the root. You want to stop at source. If you want to stop fat loss, before you even lose it, you want to stop fat gain, guys, right? The best way to stop fat loss is to first stop putting on fat. Stop putting on fat, then you can start worrying about, you know, losing it, burning it, whatever. Because if you're doing other things required to lose fat, but at the same time, you, you, you know, you're putting on fat on the left side. So you lose the fat out this window, but fat is coming in through this window. What you're doing is you have, you have a balance. You're going to stay at an equilibrium. You want to cut off the supply of fat gain, right? Whatever's causing fat gain, you want to you minimize that, cut it off. And then you want to start chopping away at the tree. So what you're going to do, obviously, is insulin, right? Everybody knows the most powerful fat-storing hormone is insulin. You don't have insulin all the way up through your fucking body all day long. 
You want to minimize that. That's going to come from your nutrition, you know, not really your training, because, you know, you only train about an hour a day, right? Your nutrition got to be on point. You don't want to eat too much. You don't want to eat shitty, right? It's basic shit. I'm not going to tell you anything new. You don't want to eat shitty. And if you do eat shitty, if you eat a lot of, you know, a lot of sugar, a lot of junk food, whatever, you want to make sure you eat that around the time that you train so your body uses that for energy. All that good shit that we learn in fucking bro science university, right? So, uh, insulin control. I'm not going to, you know, talk a lot about that. Obviously, I'm still doing this. It's like a callback living structure, but once again, it's based on studies. It's pull the fuck then. So, I'm not even going to dwell too long on insulin. You want to minimize, you know, the, the amount of time insulin stays in your body. Whether you're doing intermittent fasting, whether you're skipping breakfast, whether you, you know, you're cutting down all the sweets and things like that. Not You don't eliminate them just because, you know, obviously, you know, you, within the 21st century, you got to have sweets, right? But eat them around the time that you train. So, I'm going to get to insulin later in a different video. Uh... Second thing to maximize fat loss, obviously oxygen, right? I made several videos about that. We're gonna have basic chemistry. Oxygen, like you wanna intake a lot of oxygen. You wanna you wanna whether you're doing cardio, whether you're sprinting. Obviously, my favorite type of cardio is HIIT from day one. I try cardio, I used to swim a lot, I used to ride my bicycle a lot. Like I said, I lost fat in the beginning, but then I hit a plateau. It's not until I started doing HIIT when I was in Texas with Hunza that I started shedding the fat like crazy. That's when I first saw my abs. Within weeks, guys, I was doing I was doing sprinting and jump roping, and those were the only two things that got me lean. Even when I got lean in 2012, it was mainly jump roping five minutes every morning. Got lean super fast. So anything that will allow you to keep moving, taking a lot of oxygen, I would explain it before in a video. You learn it in, in chemistry class. Fat leaves your body through carbon dioxide and water, right? That's why you, whenever you're doing cardio, you're breathing hard, you're exhaling a lot, and you're sweating, right? But you need oxygen to start the reaction. I'm not going to go into the fucking details. Fat is CHO. Oxygen comes in. You know, fucking fucks around with the molecules. Then you have H2O leaving the body. You have carbon dioxide. We all know that shit. So, find a way to take a lot of oxygen. Find a way to breathe a lot, right? Uh, what else? What else? What else? And the last and not least is you want to reduce inflammation, right? You want to reduce inflammation. Uh, that's going to come through your, you know, your fruits, your veggies, all that shit. Your fish oil, your omega-3s. Because when you die, you're going through a lot of stress. Your cortisol level is going to be through the roof. Uh, if you're gonna be doing the caloric deficit approach, and obviously you're gonna have a lot of you know a lot of stress going on uh, from training as well. So you know, you want you want to balance that out, right? Eat your antioxidants, eat your veggies. If you don't want to eat veggies like me, I hate veggies. Juice those shit, saute, find a way to make it taste good, and eat the like I always say, don't eat shit that you don't like. Eat the veggies. I, we all hate veggies, but it's always at least one or two that we actually like the taste of. Focus on those, right? Yes, broccoli is better. Yes, kale and spinach are the top three veggies of all time. But if you don't like the taste, it's, I'd rather have you eat something that you're gonna enjoy and stay consistent with than something that you're just taking for about a week or two, right? So reduce your inflammation, right? Uh, zoom in on the picture right here. You wanna go from fat Goku to Jack than the motherfucker Goku, right? You know what I'm saying? He ate mad sensu beans, he ate a little too much. So to go from here to here, we finished the maximized fat loss part, insulin, keep insulin in check. It's the most powerful faster and hormone. Yes, it's also beneficial for muscle, but at the same time, you can't chase two rabbits, right? You're trying to either lose, you know, lose fat or get sore. Here we're trying to, you know, just mainly lose fat. Uh, obviously, oxygen, you know, HIT, cardio. Obviously, HIT is way better. Uh, science, you know, proved it, proved the fuck then. But if you don't like HIT, do cardio. If you're too overweight and HIT is gonna be too hard on your body and your joints, then do cardio. Whatever you need. Uh, you just gotta keep moving. We're living in a very sedentary world, guys. We always sitting down, always on the fucking computer, fucking on the iPad and shit like that. Find a way to get your ass off and start moving. We don't hunt anymore. We just go in the fridge for our food. So you gotta find a way to compensate for that. And obviously, inflammation. Drink a lot of water. Eat your antioxidants, things like that. All right, next. The the can I see here? Mm -hmm. All right, minimizing fat, um, muscle loss. Right. Number one thing: high protein intake. Right. Oh. I think I woke the baby up, man. But anyway, maximize your protein intake, right? Step back a little bit. High protein. I made a lot of videos about the benefits of high protein. Obviously, your body's not going to use all that for muscle building. I already made a video explain to you guys that you only need about three grams of protein retained and synthesized a day to put on a pound of muscle at the end of a month. And most of us are not been getting that three grams of protein synthesized. We eat like 200 grams of protein, but how many people you know are putting on a pound of muscle every month? That's a sign that your body is either not, not synthesizing that three grams of protein or it's not retaining it, meaning it's probably synthesizing it and breaking it down probably two days later, whatever. So anyway, you're eating high protein not to, not to build muscle, not because not your body's going to use it to, to build muscle, but because it's going to help prevent protein breakdown. 
Obviously, you're gonna lower deficit, or you, you're moving a lot. You're gonna lower protein breakdown. You're gonna um, have whatever your body needs to, you know, repair tissue and things like that. And obviously, it's, it's very, very satiating, right? Everybody knows protein out of all the three micronutrients is the most satiating. Meaning, if you eat a high protein meal, you won't be hungry for a long time. You eat a big piece of steak, big piece of chicken, you won't be hungry for the next time, right? For, for at least at least three hours, right? So eat that to keep cravings down. Um, so very high protein. Plus the thermic effect of food. Uh, protein is, has so many ben you know, benefits. Very, 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 very high thermic effect of protein, right? If you eat protein, your body has to use a lot of energy just to process that motherfucker, right? In fact, people are trying to cut down. You know how one gram of protein has four calories? People are trying to bring it down to like three point something just because of the fact that your body has to burn so, you know, so much energy to process it. So protein is amazing for that. Uh, what else protein does? Protein does so many things. Mm. What else, what else, what else? I talk about, um, keeps you full. Uh, obviously, repair, repairs muscle tissue. It'll come back later. Anyway, so, next is obviously you want to lift heavy, right? Lift heavy, use, utilize those fast twitch muscle fibers to minimize, you know, minimize muscle loss. That's basic shit, right? I'm not reinventing the wheel here. Lift heavy. You don't want to go ahead and start doing... The thing about high reps is, I'm not saying high reps don't get you big. I made a lot of videos explaining how you can get big doing high reps. But here you're trying to minimize your time in the gym because you'll be doing HIIT or you might be doing cardio. Your cortisol level is going to be through the roof. You're not trying to be in the gym for two or three hours, right? So you want to get in and get out. And, and the best way to accomplish that is by keeping your volume high, yeah, but by lifting heavy at the same time. So you utilize most fast, as most fibers. You don't want to break down too much. You know what I'm saying? If your body, if you don't use it, your body will lose it. You already know that. So lift heavy uh, and show them this right. Show them this. That's probably one of the most important parts of maintaining your muscle tissue when you're cutting. Frequency, you guys. You got to have high frequency. In your Wait, how long is the video? Oh, fuck. You got to have high frequency in your training, guys. That's what I'm saying. You don't want to spend too much time in the gym because you're going to be training frequently. The more frequently you train, the more nitrogen retention you're going to have. The more nitrogen retention you're going to have, the less muscle breakdown you're going to have. So you want to increase frequency. And here I put glucose transporters. That's what I talk about all the time. It's what um, Kiefer really brought to the world with go back loading, you know, for more studies on it. Make a long story short, glucose transporters are the things inside the fucking cell. When you're eating carbohydrates, normally insulin comes in, opens the door, and allows the glucose to go inside the cell and be used for energy. Really what happens is the insulin knocks on the door, glucose transporters come up, grab the fucking glucose, bring it inside in the mitochondria, all that good shit, right? But... Uh, every time you train and you recruit your, you know, your muscle fibers, fast, you know, mainly fast twitch, the glucose transporters come to the surface of the cell without insulin and they suck up all the glucose, right? So what happens is most of the glucose that would have went to your fat cells end up going to your muscle cells. That's the magic of glucose transporters. Very, very important. Even if you had a lot of insulin and no glucose transporters, you cannot get glucose inside the muscle cells. So these guys are very important. And the more frequently you train, obviously, the more they're going to be moving around the cell, Soaking up the glucose you're eating, making sure your fasters are not getting there. So that's one of the reasons why carbohydrate loading works so well. And once again, they even proved that. Once again, pull the fuck, man. They proved that on diabetic patients. Type 2 diabetic patients, in case you don't know, their body's insulin is all fucked up. Their body doesn't respond to insulin. But when they lift weights or do some kind of resistance training, the glucose transporters still go up to the surface and clear the sugar from the bloodstream. So that's very, very important. Try to train frequently. And when I say frequently, I'm not talking about full-blown workouts. Just... Like for example, push-ups in the morning or push-ups during your commercial breaks, air squats, uh, I don't know, random curls, five-minute curls, whatever you can do to keep your body moving throughout the day and stimulating those glucose transporters. That's really going to help you, um, you know, minimize muscle loss because you're using your muscles uh, at the time when you need them the most and also you're getting rid of all the glucose going through the blood because of the food you're eating. So guys, that's it. And the la I said seven, last and not least. Is focus, guys. You gotta. In fact, that has nothing to do with diet or training. This is just mental. Fat loss or muscle building is a mental process. If you if you're not if you don't have the mental strength to you know to say you begin the journey but you don't have the strength to continue it, eventually you're gonna quit and all your hard work. Trust me, all your hard work is gonna go right under the carpet, right in the trash. So from day one, you gotta know why is the re why are you beginning your journey? Why why are you starting it? Why are you losing weight? If you just don't want it just because you want to look good and that's not enough. To, to fuel you, you're gonna burn out. It's like having just, uh, I don't know, one gallon in your car, you're trying to go fucking 80 miles. You're gonna run out of fuel. Make sure you have something that keeps burning, right? I always talk about the rage bucket. You know, I started that video like three years ago. 
find the stuff that makes you angry. Find the stuff that makes you, you know, think about your failures, your losses. I don't know, your girlfriend broke up with you, you fucking messed up on something, you regret something. Use all that rage to help you get from point A to point B. You want to you wanna turn that into fuel. That's going to give you energy. And if that doesn't motivate you, find something else. Look at pictures of Arnold. Look at pictures of your idols. Look at pictures of people doing what you're doing. Look at pictures of people who went from fat to skinny. Look at transformation pictures. Always stay inspired. You know in Team 3D, I'm very big on inspiration. You got to stay inspired. Like I always say, you cannot win Friday's battle using Monday's motivation. You got to use Friday's motivation for fucking Friday's battle. And same thing with Saturday, same thing with Sunday. Most of the time people quit their diets because they started, they started dieting because of a picture they saw or something that happened to them, and then they lost they, they lost sight of that thing. So a week later, go on. So I finish on time for now. Okay, so a week later. Okay. Okay. okay, this video's too long, camera got you know caught up for me. Just remember those seven things, you know, insulin control, oxygen, you know, HIT or cardio, keep inflammation down, high proteins, lift heavy, uh splits, full body, whatever you want to do. Keep it frequent, and obviously stay focused. Find something to keep you on track, right? And I guarantee you, I don't know a single person who does all these seven things and it's still fucking track. Unless you got, you know, fucking genetic disorder. But anyway, guys, wish you the best of luck, and follow me on the journey. You'll see me losing fat. I'm just trying to go for at least a pound a, a, pound a week, but I'm not really worried about the scale. We'll see. When I get down to 190, we'll see if this worked or not. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thanks. Thank um, enough for the cameraman. Get it one last time, take a quick snapshot, mm -hmm. and that's it. I'm out of here. Yo, come on, son. <laughs> anyway, so, so I was like, yo, Hansa, let's, let's make, make a video and show them how we came out with these massages. And we spent like the last 10 minutes laughing. The first one is, you have to chill. You have to chill.